I'm Wayne Carini, and I chase cars. Despite the astounding variety of reality shows out there available to watch, it's actually quite hard to find one which isn't too focused on drama and issues between the cast. Fortunately, this isn't the case for Motor Trend's chasing classic cars as its host, Wayne Carini, always did an excellent job at keeping the show solely centered on finding, restoring, and selling the most incredible and rarely seen classic autos ever produced. Although the excitement about chasing classic cars doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon, rumors regarding the apparent lack of salary of the mechanic Roger Barr has affected the show's good reputation. However, do these allegations hold any truth? or simply misunderstandings. Stay with us to know all about the apparent financial issues of Roger Barr, what happened to his job with Wayne Carini, and the future of chasing classic cars. There's no doubt that Roger Barr's unique personality and charm in front of the chasing classic cars cameras made him quite unforgettable. So considering how well-liked and popular Roger is to the chasing classic cars audience, it's only expected that he was well compensated financially in return. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. As it happened, in 2018 a fundraising campaign was set up by a friend of Roger to help him afford medical costs. However, besides being surprised to know that he was going through such financial difficulties, Roger's fans were flabbergasted at knowing he was apparently not being paid at all for appearing in Chasing Classic Cars. He doesn't benefit from the sales of million dollar exotics, nor has any income from the TV series. As the campaign founder Steve Cripps wrote, Though Roger's detailed financial situation wasn't discussed further, the campaign made it evident that he wasn't receiving any stable income from the show. Apparently, only a salary for his job as a mechanic at F40 Motorsports. While the fundraising campaign for Roger received huge support from his fans, the fact that Wayne Carini didn't address the statements about his friend not having a salary from appearing on TV certainly left the show's fans with a bittersweet taste. Unfortunately, Roger Barr has been going through some severe health issues in recent years. According to the fundraising campaign for his benefit, in 2017, Roger was hospitalized for an infection he obtained after injuring himself while working in F40 Motorsports. Apparently, his health issues continued long afterwards, and later that year, he was again hospitalized to treat the same infection, which kept him away from work for several months. For reasons unknown, Roger wasn't compensated by the workers' compensation program during his absence from work, making his financial situation quite complicated, as his wife Sally's medical bills added to his, refusing to ask for help himself despite to be in need of it. By the time his friends started the fundraising campaign, Roger allegedly only worked four hours a day in F40 motorsports, and so, not having enough income to afford his medical treatment. Since the start of the campaign in 2019, Roger has been able to afford having two knee replacement surgeries, dental work, and heart issue treatment, thanks to his fans' donations. Much to the dismay of those who wanted to see Roger Barr in chasing classic cars again, that doesn't seem to be possible for the time being. As it happens, Roger is no longer an F40 Motorsports employee and is now working for Paddock Car Restorations in Connecticut. Although it's unknown when exactly he left his job in F40 Motorsports and the current status of his friendship with Wayne Carini, the truth is that Roger's apparently happy with his job at the Paddock, where he's been working since June 2020. He found a great work environment, a great boss to work for, and he gets to do what he loves. True happiness through internal combustion for everyone, as his son wrote on Facebook in mid-2022, often describing Roger's new job as his happy place. Both his son and the paddock often share updates about his recent projects, as well as his health, on social media. While this is obviously not the same as seeing Roger on TV, it's good to know that he's doing well these days. Besides the many questions regarding Roger Barr's role in chasing classic cars, and his financial situation, the audience often wonders what's in store for the show. As it happens, ever since the show wrapped up its 16th season in November 2020, no further seasons have premiered or even been promised. That being said, hopes of a possible renewal aren't lost yet. As to date, Motor Trend hasn't officially cancelled the show, and regardless, business hasn't stopped for Wayne Carini. Not only do things seem to be going well for F40 Motorsports, according to social media, but Wayne is also deeply focused on his bi-monthly subscription magazine The Chase, which has been around since 2017 and features articles by big names in the auto industry such as Russ Rocknack and Mike Brewer. As well, 
Wayne has been an active contributor to Mesh New England since 2011, and as if that wasn't enough, he also owns the brand Carini Wines. All in all, the future is uncertain for chasing classic cars, and though many would like to see it return to TV screens, it's enough to know that life is good for Wayne nowadays. According to online reports, Wayne has an approximate net worth of $20 million as of late 2022. His fortune comes from his decades-long career restoring and selling classic cars for a living, on top of his salary from his TV show, Chasing Classic Cars, his wine company, and work as a writer and magazine owner. On top of that, Wayne's business F40 Motorsports exhibits at least 25 autos in its headquarters. And while many of these belong to third-party collectors, it's known that a vast majority are either for sale or a part of Wayne's personal collection. Although it's impossible to calculate the value of his extensive collection, it's a known fact that classic cars aren't cheap at all. Unsurprisingly, Wayne Carini and Roger Barr's friendship started long before chasing classic cars existed. According to a 2016 article by Haggerty, Wayne was only 10 years old when he met the older man. If dad was fixing an imported car that needed mechanical work, he'd take it to Roger. Wayne wrote in a reference to both men's separate business in Glastonbury, and frequent collaboration with each other. If a car at Roger's shop needs body repairs, it would always end up at dad's. According to Wayne, visiting Roger's old shop as a kid was an unforgettable adventure. Not only was his No French Cars Allowed sign iconic enough to stay in his mind for decades, but the many race cars he saw there fueled Wayne's early passion for everything automotive. Passing from sitting in the cars in Roger's shop to visiting the business of his own accord years later, it's obvious that Wayne developed a deep respect for the older man. Although he admits that his own father and Roger weren't close friends, their camaraderie and business relationship continued for many years. Maybe that's why in the early 2000s, Roger decided to work for Wayne instead of retiring. Even though information about Roger Barr's early years is unfortunately unrevealed, the few details about his life are quite fascinating. Long before establishing his own business, Roger Barr actually served in the US Air Force during the late 1950s, learning the basics of mechanics when he was stationed in Germany. According to reports online, his time in foreign land gave him the chance to work for some big manufacturers, such as Porsche, using that knowledge to establish his own auto shop after his return to the US. Although still an up-and-coming mechanic, Roger Barr's love for race cars took him to the tracks in the early 1960s, making the podium of the National Championship Runoff's Formula V in 1964 and in second place, passing on to take third place in the Formula A Continental Championship race in the St. Jovite in Quebec, Canada. While Roger's racing career apparently ended in the early 1970s, his involvement with the automotive track world helped him in attracting clientele to his business back in the day. His involvement with the automotive track world helped him in attracting clientele to his business back in the day. That being said, even if Roger often dealt with cars of any type and chasing classic cars, he's a man of foreign and race cars. Regardless of Wayne Carini's current fame in the automotive world, his popularity is rivaled by that of his late father. Back in 1952, Bob Carini contributed greatly to the automotive field in the US by helping establish the Model A Restores Car Club of America, having its first meeting in Michigan when Wayne was less than 10 months old. However, even prior to that, Bob was already known for his top-level work as a body shop builder and subsequently as a parts seller. According to Wayne, his early life was spent on several trips around New York State, New England, and Pennsylvania, searching for car parts and attending exhibitions all over the country, such as the legendary old car show, Hershey. It was the Mecca. Our whole year was built around going there and bringing one or two or three cars that he would have restored, he told Mesh New England in 2011. Bob's deep knowledge of the classic led him to curate the Captain Paul House Model A Museum at some point. And even with the Achievement Award by the Antique Automobile Club of America, besides managing his business Continental Auto until his retirement, Bob died in 2016, but many of his contributions to the field of classic cars are still significant nowadays. Something which any good fan of chasing classic cars knows well. Considering his father's deep love for autos, it's not surprising that Wayne Carini followed the same path in life. Long before envisioning himself owning several auto-related businesses, Wayne was a committed assistant in his father's show, Continental Auto, learning everything from cleaning the rearview mirrors of the cars in the shop to knowing the apparent difference between some rarely seen classic models. 
Wayne's love for cars was cemented at just 9 years old, when he became enamored of a 1960 Rosso Chiario Ferrari 250 he was taken on a ride in. From then on, trips to exhibitions and showrooms increased in the Carini household, until Wayne went away to college to study architecture. Although he later changed his major to art education, graduating didn't make a big difference in his life anyway. As unable to find any job, he returned home and unsurprisingly found his love for cars renewed. Not long afterwards, he was offered half of the restoration business, built over decades from almost nothing by his father. That was the final sign for Wayne to definitely follow the path that he's successfully still walking nowadays. For Wayne Carini, entering the entertainment world was a matter of being in the right place at the right time. In 2006, he was interviewed by the New York Times about his persistent and decades-long search for a Hudson Italia he first caught sight of when he was 16 years old. The charming article entitled Your First Love and Your Last Love ends on a happy note, as Wayne ultimately bought the exact dreamt of Hudson Italia decades after the original owner passed away in the early 1980s, promising the now former owner to keep the car local in order to preserve it. However, unbeknownst to Wayne, his story's article caught the attention of Jim Ostrowski, a TV producer who was impressed with Wayne's commitment and deep love for autos. Jim Ostrowski, who owns uh, Essex Television and Crash and Wave Productions, read that article on Sunday, called me Monday morning, said I'd like to do a TV show about you. I thought he was a little off his rocker. But he came up, uh, we talked for about a half an hour in my office, and the rest is history. Uh, Chasing Classic Cars was, uh, was born that day. Whether it's shown on the small screen or not, Wayne's pursuit of all types of classic cars isn't set to end anytime soon. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.